Right, only about two weeks late, but here is my Gardens of the Galaxy 2 review. Why did I take so long? Well, because I wasn't exactly sure how I felt on this movie. I need time to think on it. My first sign of trouble with this movie that I came out saying I really, really liked it. And, hey, that's a positive thing about the movie. The problem is most of the time I come out of these big budget superhero movies, especially Guardians 1, and loving it. And sometimes I'd go down to like a really, really like, sometimes stay to loving, sometimes I realized, oh, I liked it even more. Unfortunately for this one, I realized I really liked it. It's just, there was something missing. And I really had to dive, not sort of deep, but really think about what the pros and cons of this movie were before I could come up with a finite score, a finite idea of what I thought about this movie. And don't get me wrong, this is a very fun popcorn, big blockbuster you should go see in theaters. I saw it in IMAX 3D and it was awesome type movie. And James Gunn does a great job at this. It's very comedic, very funny, very uh, visually appealing. Uh, it has some great scenes. It even has some weight and some emotion. And what it does with sequels that I like is that it's a very different movie than uh, the original Guardians. In fact, it's very... <laughs> in the way that Guardians was kind of like Star Wars, the original New Hope, if you think about it. This was kind of emulating <laughs> Empire Strikes Back. And I think that might have been one of the, the flaws of the movie. Uh, just in the fact that we're now living in a Star Wars is back type world. And when you're still trying to do kind of Star Wars in a world where Star Wars is around, you realize it's not quite up there. And then when it's, it feels similar in, in tone to what it's trying to do as Empire, and it not being as good as Empire, also kind of hurts from it. But that's not the real problem with this movie. Now let's dive right into the big problem with this movie. Is that there's not any real character development for the most part. There's a handful of characters that I don't want to spoil. I think Nebula went from barely being a character in the first movie to actually being a pretty decent character in this movie. Rocket, I think, has some some uh, good character moments. And Yondu, I also feel, is brought more into the fold and has a, a lot of the strongest character development in this movie. But literally every other character, I just felt, didn't have good character development. Drax is the same as we saw him at the end of Guardians 1, where it's finally kind of learned that he doesn't understand sarcasm and whatnot. And a lot of the humor comes from Drax, and it's very similar to the humor from the first movie, so while it's still funny, it's not new and refreshing anymore. Uh, the Groot, Baby Groot, is the most adorable thing we're going to see on screen all year, and the scenes, with, like, the first action scene, uh, the action's all happening behind Baby Groot while he's dancing. It's a great scene, it's fun, and Baby Groot in this movie is adorable and awesome, but he's more of like a cute little pet than a character in this movie. Where he was kind of the big source of emotion at the end of the first movie, and this one he's like a cute little pet. Uh, Gamora is completely wasted in this movie. Uh, like, right, like my god, like she was, she was arguably the second biggest protagonist in the first movie, and she's barely a thing in this one. I mean, she's in it, but they don't give her anything to do. And then Star-Lord, while big things happen to him, where he was at the start of the movie and where he was at the end of the movie is the same. Which all leads to this movie kind of feel filling, kind of feeling almost like filler, kind of like a stopgap in between a bigger movie. And what's sad is that this probably has one of the best villains in the Marvel Cinematic Movies outside of uh, Loki or Jeff Bridges' characters from the original Iron Man. Uh... It, it where he's he's very well developed. Uh, uh, the problem is is that we don't really get an idea of who the main villain is until the second half of the movie. During the first half of the movie, they're juggling three, four different potential main antagonists. Well, they should have done is cut out one or two of those and spent more time focusing on our main cast and crew, especially Gamora, give them something to do. It would have made this movie more impactful, more character development, and while you did wind up with a good villain, if even if you still had another one of the potential villains in there to to misguide you to who you think the villain is, the the main villain could have used. No, I think the main villain had good character development. But we could have used some more screen time for the actual guardians to help improve the movie. Outside of our guardians, the main antagonists, the new people that are brought in, Mantis, I, I think was fine. She didn't really add a whole lot to the movie. The the Gold Chick, one of the potential villains, also didn't add a whole lot to the movie. Sylvester Stallone, I think, kind of fit very well in this group, but his is just 
kind of a glorified cameo, but it definitely fits in the world, and I could see his character being used in the future. And Kurt Russell, I think, just did amazing. <laughs> I mean, they they brought 80s Kurt Russell back for, for a moment. And I don't just mean it was like him from the 80s. I mean, like, that CGI stuff they do. It was him from the 80s at some point. That was cool. Now, while the new additions did well for the movie, I think a problem with the movie is that it should have tied more into the MCU in general. Uh, maybe bring in some of those characters into this. Because while Guardians 1 was completely separate from the MCU, it was also very tied to it. I mean, it had Thanos as a main villain and uh, the Infinity Stone as a main plot point. This one, because it didn't have any ties to the bigger MCU really at all, it, it made it feel more like a stopgap just in the way that no character development, it feel like a stopgap, and these two things kind of took away from the movie when you sit back and look at it. I mean, it, it felt like a smaller scale story, too. I mean, the first one, they're saving the galaxy from this big bad thing. The second one, they saved the galaxy, but it just feels smaller. And I also, in the end of the movie, it has the normal superhero problem of where the the hero and the villain kind of have the same abilities and they're going at each other. I feel this had the same type thing. I don't want to spoil how, who, or why, but it it definitely had that feeling of hey, I have this power, I have the same power. Let's go head to head, and and then it they sacrifice comedy for for visual appealing effects. I feel in in this end scene, but that's besides the point. This is still a very strong, fun movie, but it just felt like filler, felt like we didn't need this, I mean, I mean, we don't need any movie, but I feel like there's a bigger story to tell here, maybe if you, like I said, if you just would have cut out some of the villains, focused more on the Guardians, gave us more screen time with the main antagonist, this could have been as great as Guardians 1. At the end of the day, I think I prefer Guardians 1, I prefer a lot of the MCU movies, I think it's still upper half, I think it's very enjoyable, I think... I think this is one that needs to be seen in a the theater. I'm not necessarily, necessarily sure all the MCU movies need to be seen in the theater. I feel this is one that should. This feels good. It feels fun. I definitely recommend it, but at the end of the day, I'm only going to give it a 7.5. Uh, it, it needed more movie to it instead of just spectacular. Uh, and James Gunn is capable of delivering both. I feel he went a little more into the spectacular side than the movie side this time. But I still have high hopes for it. Uh, let me know what you thought about Guardians down below. Sorry for being so late on the review. I've just been busy working and whatnot. Uh, and I should have my King Arthur review up in a couple of days as well. And planning to see Alien coming up this week. So hopefully that gets out sooner. Uh, like I said, I saw this movie on the Thursday. And it took me two weeks to finally find time to record it. So hopefully that will come to you. I'll, I, I've almost finished more hour of the book I've been reading. That should be coming soon. And Persona 5, uh, I've, I'm trying to find time to beat it. I'm like 70 hours in, which means i still got a lot of time left, but I'm enjoying it so far. So let me know what you thought about Guardians down below. What's your favorite MCU movie? Mine is still Winter Soldier, I think. Uh, yeah, Winter Soldier is better than Civil War. I'll fight you if you disagree. Like, share, and subscribe. See you guys next time.